My name is Professor Moira O'Brien. I am the Dean of Science at the University of Melbourne in Australia. I think India is like many countries, in, including in Australia, we have a, um, an increasing number of men who are having their children older. We have uh, a changing environment where perhaps male fertility is declining and we have a population that values children highly. So this is, I think we have a, a problem in that we have a significant population of men who are suffering from infertility and we have a health system that perhaps is not optimal to treat the, that infertility. I can't comment specifically on India, but I could, um, just talking generally about countries, we know that there is very compelling data that male, infertility, male fertility is declining or rather sperm output is declining. It is declining quite quickly and at a rate that cannot be accounted for by genetics. So it must be environmental factors. We know some of the factors that impair fertility, but we don't know them all. And as a research academic sector, we haven't worked out which ones are the most problematic or how they interact with each other. So that is a problem, but it's also an opportunity because if we can work out what the causes of infertility are, so we know, for example, some pesticides, some plasticizers can uh, affect fertility. If we can identify what those factors are, we can remove them from the environment so fertility should naturally improve. I think it's an ex exactly the same scenario that most compounds we uh, experience every day. So let's say plasticizers when you're drinking out of a plastic cup, it won't cause sterility. But when you add it to 20, 100 other compounds, each of which just affect fertility a little bit and you add them up, then you might have something that causes sterility. Again, that's an opportunity because if you can identify five of those things and remove them from our environment or our diet, you can then you know, increase fertility. And uh, no, we do have some, we do have some clues, mm -hmm. but it would be a very worthwhile investment for industry and government and universities in the research sector to tackle those questions together. And we do know, let's say we identify some plasticizers or uh, that affect male fertility to then go to our chemists and ask them, can you formulate something that is just as good at holding food or water or whatever, but won't have negative effects on fertility? It is possible to develop those products, but as consumers, we need to help create the market for that to happen. So we know some things that definitely cause infertility. So if uh, young men or older men even take anabolic steroids, we know it will make them sterile, no problem. They stop taking them, fertility will come back. Uh, we know that as we talked about some toxicants like plasticizers or pesticides, some medications, we know they suppress uh, male fertility. Again, if you remove them, often the fertility will come back. But there are huge numbers of other things that there might be a little bit of data to suggest they push down male fertility, but they haven't been tested systematically. And as you identified, life is not exposure to one compound. You have a whole soup of things. We need to test compounds in combination. That's a really big question. So there's a hypothesis called uh, male infertility is the canary in the coal mine of health. So we know from epidemiological data that as a big group, lots of variation in it, that infertile men do carry a higher disease burden and they do die younger than fertile men. Now, the causes of that infertility, some of them will be genetic mutations, genetic variation, it's quite normal, where um, it's a, 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 a dysfunction in a gene that's required for male fertility. So those men will be infertile from day one. But the same genes are also involved in other parts in your body. So while fertility fails first, other areas will be affected eventually. Maybe they will be accelerated by environmental exposures. So, you know, that canary in the coal mine idea of that male fertility fails first. Now, the other side of that is 
We know that any form of systemic illness, so if someone has influenza or uh, malaria, or even if they break their arm, it will affect fertility. Um, and that's because you have a big upregulation of the immune system, dampens down fertility. Again, when they recover, fertility bounces back. So uh, sometimes it's a uh, you know, environment affecting fertility. Sometimes it's a fili a fin a f infertility failing first, if you like. Now, your question about uh, transmission to the next generation. Again, this is a, um, a concerning area, but again, an op it's an opportunity. We now know that sperm are about much more than just delivering DNA into an embryo. Um, you could think of the DNA as the hardware of a computer, if you like. Um, that DNA will be shared with every other cell. But layered on top of that DNA, you have what's called epigenetic effects. And they're like the software, you know, the code that's put on top of the DNA. That code is affected by the man's health, the potential father's health. So if he's, you know, healthy, you'll have a good code. Um, if he's had an unhealthy lifestyle or he's been ill, the code won't be quite so good. That gets transferred into what will eventually become a baby. And we know that that can have long-term health outcomes for the health of that child who will then grow up to an adult. What we don't know, but there's a little bit of data coming out to say even if that happens, so sometimes you can't help if you uh, have influenza, you, you can't help that. And if you conceive a child then, that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's a bit of data coming out now showing that once the child is born, if they have a healthy lifestyle, so let's say good food, uh, regular exercise, it can change that health trajectory, if you like. But there's a long way to go to actually understand all of those steps. One of my, I work on the genetics of infertility and even many scientists will say to me that you can't inherit infertility. Well, of course you can. Um, we know that uh, genetic variations, mutations are happening all the time in the same way that you can inherit um, kidney disease or muscle disease from uh, your parents, you can inherit infertility. Some types, sometimes you inherit it through the maternal line, sometimes it's through the uh, paternal line. Um, but it is certainly possible to inherit infertility. And in the vast majority of cases, infertility has nothing to do with what the man did. It's just good luck or bad luck.